Taking guilt-free breaks has been something I've been working on for the last few years. Back in November, I spent eight days in Costa Rica, traveling, exploring, and recharging. The trip was filled with ATV rides, beach lounging, massages, cooking classes, fine dining, beachfront horseback riding, yoga in the jungle, pedicures, and no alarm clocks. By the time I got back to Austin, I felt energized, inspired, motivated, and ready to get back to work. This trip was only possible because I gave myself permission to take the earned and much needed vacation. In this episode, I break down the six rules and systems I've created to help me take time off without feeling bad about it. Use them. It will help you during the holiday break and any future breaks you plan or need to take. So why do we feel guilty taking time off from work? We look at the never-ending to-do list and tell ourselves it's only going to get bigger if we take a break so we don't stop working. We constantly compare where we are today to where we want to be in the future, and so we rationalize that we need to keep chipping away. We're fearful of the opportunities that we may miss because of the downtime and treat it as if they'll never come knocking on our door again. The thought of FOMO from seeing others work while we're on vacation scares us, so we avoid it by keeping our heads down. We're like a hamsters running on a wheel, and we refuse to get off except to eat, sleep, use the bathroom, and do the bare minimum so that we can get back to work. Who wants to live a life like that? Not you nor I, but too often that is our reality. According to timescamp.com, the reason we feel guilty taking time to slow down is because we are all raised this way. The time spent at work is still seen as more valuable than time spent on yourself or with your family. They also elaborate on how society has shaped our views in all the wrong ways. We view poor people as lazy. We allow our jobs to define our status. We think constant stress is the norm and the way life is meant to be. We view money as a measure of our worth. The reality is that we're playing by the rules that society has imposed on us and unless we take action and draw a line in the sand, we'll never find the time to slow down. Well, today, the buck stops here. It is time for you to stop and smell the roses because you've earned it and you need it. Not just because it's the holidays, but because you are a human being, and not a human doing. I want to share with you six rules that I live by that have helped me incorporate rest into my life without feeling guilty. Number one, hard stop working time. Having this rule in place helps me be more productive in my day because it creates a healthy sense of urgency to get things done in a timely manner, knowing exactly when I need to stop for the day. It also holds me accountable for carving out time in the evening for date nights with my partner, catching up with family over FaceTime, attending new experiences here in Austin, or maybe having a solitary evening just to myself. Of course, there are those moments when I need to make an exception, but I would say that four out of five days of the week, I completely shut down work by 6.30 p.m., and I do not reopen the laptop until the next day. Number two, create a wind-down routine. Having a hard stop working time is a great first step, but sometimes our brains don't want to shut off immediately, and it can take a bit of time to fully slow down. The best hack that I've found for being able to compartmentalize and leave work behind fully until the next day is having a wind down routine. For me, it's not some complicated nine step routine. It is simply the act of spending no more than 60 seconds reorganizing my office space from the day, closing up the blinds, shutting off the lights, closing the door to the office, and going for a 20 minute walk. The act of closing up shop helps me recognize that the working day is over, and then immediately going for a walk helps me get out of my head from whatever I was last working on, and instead gets me into my body through movement. By the time I get back, I'm ready to cook dinner, read, watch some Netflix, and enjoy the rest of the day relaxing without feeling the need to check incoming emails. Number three, six and one rule. As we know, there are seven days in the week. I'm allowed to work six of them, but I need to take off one of them completely, hence the six-in-one rule. Now, I feel lucky and fortunate to be able to say that I love what I do, 
And because of that, I really see every day as an opportunity to learn, build, and grow my business. Oftentimes, I find myself working short sprints on the weekend in the morning, and I really don't mind it because I'm choosing to do it. I've created this beautiful work-life harmony for myself where the days I feel most fulfilled are when I'm incorporating every aspect of my life. What plays a huge role in how much and how often I'm working on the weekends depends on the season of life I'm in. Currently, I'm in a heads-down phase with a lot of positive change coming in my life in the new year. January 15th, 2024, we are burning the ships. Six months ago, though, I was the opposite and in a much more relaxed and slowed down season of my life, which meant no work on the weekends at all. Regardless of whether I'm in the heavy season or not, I try to use this rule to, be, to the best of my ability so that I can step away from work fully, come back rested, recharged, and excited. Number four, shift my calendar when needed. There's nothing worse than knowing inside you need some room to breathe and then looking at a calendar that is stacked from the morning till the evening. A great example was this morning when I rolled out of bed, I was supposed to head straight to a men's run club that I've been attending every Tuesday here in Austin, hosted by my friend and fellow podcaster, Danny Miranda. Not feeling it and craving some solitude, I made the adjustment and let him know I wasn't going to make it. Although I wasn't bailing because I needed the rest, I was pivoting because I knew that it didn't feel right this morning. I've learned to be unapologetic and shift things on my calendar when needed. So if I feel the need for rest, I will do what needs to be done. I've also taken note that I feel my best self when I never commit to back-to-back -back days of social activities during the week. And now that's a rule that I've built into my schedule to create more time for rest for myself. Always give your mind and body what it needs because if you don't, nobody else will. Number five, create tech-free zones. When I was in Costa Rica, I remember seeing this couple laying by the pool daily, both on their phones constantly. Now, if that made them happy, be my guest. But thinking that both of them were likely on their vacation in a beautiful country and yet glued to their phones just didn't feel right to me. During periods of rest, I will be very intentional with when and how often I use my phone or laptop. More often than not, when I was in Costa Rica, I will check and respond to people only twice per day, once in the morning and once in the evening. Sometimes I will go days without responding because I'm embracing and welcoming an extended break and I feel that I really want to be present and fully enjoy it. And that's where I detach myself from the technology. Just because we have phones that connect us to the world 24-7 doesn't mean we need to be available at a moment's notice. It is on us to make a choice to create space from the world, even when it's trying to grab every second of our time and attention daily. When debating whether to respond to something or not, I will most often ask myself, does this need a response right now or can it wait? 99% of the time, it can wait. And so I push off on responding until I'm ready to. Another benefit of creating these tech-free zones is not falling for the comparison trap of others or feeling guilty about not working when seeing others post about their day via social media. It is so easy to get consumed by what others are doing when in a period of rest when we should be solely focused on the rest. Other ways of creating tech-free zones that have worked for me include no phone for the first 60 minutes of the day, no scrolling when I'm with my partner or a friend, no technology after 8 p.m. during the week. We often forget that technology stimulates the brain. And when we're looking for more rest in our life, we can't forget that mental rest is really important too. Number six, Plan extended rest time in advance. There's no way you're going to be able to convince me to take off a week when my schedule is filled and you're asking me to take that week off next week. But if you're talking about a trip months down the line where my schedule is extremely flexible and I have plenty of time to shift things around if needed, it is a lot easier for me to commit. I do my best to plan any trips that are going to require me to take off more than four days in a row at least two to three months in advance. This gives me plenty of time to plan accordingly so that when the time does come, 
I am ready to unplug and I don't feel guilty about it. For example, Costa Rica was planned six months in advance and I didn't feel an ounce of guilt being there because I made sure that all client calls, brand partnerships, content posting, et cetera, happened before I left or was ready for me when I returned. I didn't miss a beat when I was gone and neither did my business. As Dwight Eisenhower once said, plans are nothing, planning is everything. Questions from the community. Chris, how many times of putting this into practice did it take before it finally worked? There's a great quote that I once heard, always the student, never the master, that comes to mind when I read this question because I still feel like there's so much room for improvement with myself and allowing rest. I would say this has been a work in progress for the last three-ish years. And once again, depending on the season of life, it will play a huge role in how much time I'm carving out for balance. If I look back at the last 30 days, I went to Costa Rica, had my girlfriend's mother to visit for us for Thanksgiving. I then had my family in town to celebrate my 30th. Let's go. The old and burnt out me would be extremely anxious trying to figure out How am I going to stay productive while leading into these important life moments and experiences? But present me welcomed it with open arms because I know my work is only one of the many parts about me. That my happiness doesn't need to only come from what's happening within my business. It can also come from everything outside of it. Orlando asked, how much relaxing is too much relaxing? That's a great question. Honestly, it's a case-by-case scenario for everyone. So many variables play into this, like the season of life you're in or what your current priorities are. But be honest with yourself and ask, is this rest or is this me procrastinating doing what needs to be done? Listen to your gut. It will be very clear. Challenge for you. Are you ready to break free from this feeling guilty about taking time off? Use one, some, or all six of the rules that I shared with you today. To recap them, come up with your own hard stop working time so that you know when to shut it down for the day and you can rest. Create your own wind down routine that will help you mentally and physically switch gears at the end of a busy day from switching from work mode to relaxation mode. Adjust your calendar as often as needed to ensure you're not feeling overworked or overcommitted. When in a period of rest, step away from technology and allow yourself to be present instead of distracting yourself by watching what everyone else is doing via social media. And lastly, plan all extended vacations at least two to three months in advance so that you can plan accordingly and not feel bad about taking the time off when it comes. Head over to bobbyhobert.com to learn more about my weekly newsletter, digital courses, or my one-on-one coaching program if you found this episode valuable. I have a lot of different offerings that could be uh, some really good help to you in the new year. If you enjoyed this specific episode, the best way to support is screenshot this episode on whatever platform you are listening in on, post it to your IG story, tag me at Bob A, that's B-O, three B's, four A's and a Y. Drop the podcast on your IG story. Let me know what was the biggest takeaway? What did you learn? How did this specific episode change your perspective? I guarantee there's someone that follows you that is also feeling guilty about taking breaks and what beautiful way to help them than to share out the episode that helped you. So please do that today. It really, really helps the show. And if you have not yet rated the show and you're a Spotify listener, we're at 4.9 ratings across 132 reviews. Please leave us a review today. It would mean the world to me. It is so important to the growth of the show. If you're an iTunes listener, we're at a 4.8 rating. Uh, with 95 reviews. So please leave a review there if possible. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Bearded Man Podcast.